Hey, my name is Brendan, and this is another video in my series on synthesis and sound design, where I'm going to be showing you how to turn the sounds in your head into synthesizers that you can use in your projects. As always, I'm going to be using Helm, a free cross-platform synthesizer software. And if you haven't downloaded it yet, I'd recommend following the link in the description of this video so you can download it for yourself. Now, in the first few videos in this series, we talked about some of the choices that you can make to determine the sound that your synth is going to have before you add any effects or modulation to it. The first big choice that you can make when you're deciding how you want your synth to sound is choosing some waveforms for your oscillators. Now, we mentioned that each of these different waveforms has a different characteristic all to itself because of the different harmonic content of each waveform. And you can think of them as different instruments with different characteristics that I recommend you write down the different characteristics of each waveform so that you have them in mind and you can draw some connections when you're thinking of sounds. We can use the mixer in Helm to mix together different amounts of different oscillators, including these two oscillators up top and our sub oscillator. Once we have that first sound set up, we can adjust the volume of our synth over time by setting up an amplitude envelope, which by default has this sort of square shape to it, which has a very fast attack, and as soon as we let go of it, it has no release, and it has full sustain. Which I think we're actually going to leave just as it is for today's project, because we're going to be making a chiptune lead sound. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with chiptune, it's a sort of music that is pretty much based on older styles of video game music, which had fairly simplistic uh, synthesizers, but the artists who were using it were able to make pretty unique sounds uh, using a fairly limited waveform. Uh, and I happen to know that the uh, oscillator that is used in a lot of this type of music is the square wave. So I'm going to go ahead and select the square wave from the top left corner of our menu. Once we have that set up, I'm going to just solo that for now, and let's hear how it sounds. And that's a pretty good start. Uh, I might go ahead and add a little bit of our sub in as well, so we can give it a bit of bottom end. Not too, too much, but just a little bit. I think that's a pretty good starting place uh, for our uh, for our chiptune lead. Nice. One thing that I'd like to take care of, though, is that if I play more than one note right now, uh, I get a chord, uh, which works for some synths, but for this one, since it's a lead, I want to only be playing one note at a time, which is especially true for chiptune leads because they were originally made on trackers, which had four channels which could only play one note each at a time. So to get that sort of authentic sound, we're going to go to the bottom left corner of Helm, and we're going to take this Voices knob and turn it down to one voice, which makes our synthesizer mono, meaning just one voice. Let's hear how that sounds. Now, if I try and play two notes at the same time, Helm just selects one for me to use. So we have, we have our voices set up. We have the general oscillators sec, uh, selected that we want to use. Maybe one thing that we can do is we can smooth out some of these transitions between notes by affecting what we call the portamento of the sound, which is the glide. That we can set up over on the top or on the bottom right corner of Helm. We can see that there's this little section labeled Porta Type, which is now set to off. If we set it to on, we can hear that when we go between two different notes, rather than just jumping from one to the other, there will be a slight slide between them. Let's hear what that sounds like. I tend to prefer that sound. Uh, I think it has a bit more smoothness to it and a bit more character than just jumping between the notes. And now what we can do if we want to is we can adjust how long it will take to slide between them. If we want to have a very long slide time, which often sounds pretty silly, we can have a, a very long portamento. 
I think that's a bit too dramatic for this sound. So I'm gonna say, something around that level uh, sounds pretty good to me. So we have the basic setup of our sound. And if we wanted to, one thing that we could do to emulate sort of a chiptune sound, maybe if we weren't doing a lead, but we were, we were doing a backing instrument, is we could make use of the arpeggiator up top here. To turn on this effect, go ahead and click on the power button right here. That has turned on our arpeggiator, which is basically just going to uh, cycle between whatever notes we're holding down in a certain rhythm and with a certain pattern. So I'll just uh, hold down a major chord so you can hear what it sounds like. And if I turn up the frequency, we'll really get sort of an old, uh, old school sound. Let me turn the frequency down a little bit. And if I were going to use this as an arpeggiator sound, I'd probably turn off the portamento so it just uh, goes cleanly between each note. That's something that you might want to play around with in your project. For today, I think I'm going to turn the arpeggiator off and the portamento back on. But I would like to explore some of these other effects. The first thing I'd like to explore is the reverb effect, which, just like with the arpeggiator, I can turn on by clicking the power button. By default, it sounds like this. Which, I think for some sounds might be good, Depending on the mix, uh, how this falls into the song, that might be a fine mix. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I think it sounds a little bit too dramatic. That's a bit more what I was thinking. And one thing I might want to add is a bit of delay. Let's set the frequency to one eighth note. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. Um, I have an idea for what I want to do, but I have to talk about something else first. Um, so one thing I'd like to add that is sort of a classic sound in chiptune is uh, a vibrato, which is just going to shift very quickly back and forth um, between a sort of fine tuning on a note. It's sort of a warbly sound that I think you'll recognize as soon as you hear it. To do this, what I need to do is affect the tuning of my main oscillator. I haven't talked about this yet, but there's lots of different tuning options that we'll be getting into to give lots of character to your oscillators. Today we're just going to use this fine tune knob on our square wave, which if I move it back and forth quickly, maybe I can sort of get the sound I'm thinking of. It's sort of a shaky sound, but I think there's probably a better way to manage this than manually moving the tune knob back and forth. And for this, we're going to start to make use of modulators, which we've sort of already made use of when we used our amplitude envelope. The idea is pretty similar. We're going to have some modulator, some controller, that is going to be affecting a parameter of our synth over time. It's going to move it up and down in sort of a rhythmic way. And to do this, we're going to start to open up our modulation matrix, sort of, which is a bit of a complicated term, but it's pretty easy in practice. All you have to do is think of what it is that you want to be targeting, which in this case is the tune knob of our oscillator, and what it is that you want to be turning that parameter. What's going to be affecting it? If we want it to be going back and forth pretty quickly, what we can make use of is this sine wave, which is doing just that. It's going up and down, around a zero point, around a centered point. Instead of just going up and down like our envelopes, this actually dips back, so it's positive and negative. It'll go back and forth as opposed to just forward and back to a starting point. So to use this, we'll click on this little helmet. And now there's a whole bunch of green stuff on the screen. And this is just showing us all of the possible parameters that this sine wave can be changing. But for now, we already know our target is going to be this tune knob. So we're going to click on that, and we're going to set how much we want it to be affected. 
And you can actually see on the screen, we can already see uh, a little bar moving back and forth over the tune knob. That's controlling how much this sine wave is affecting it. So if I hold down this note, we can hear that. Let's set that as the amount for now. Um, and we already have sort of what I was talking about of moving back and forth with a rhythmic uh, setting, but it sounds pretty... It sounds kind of seasick to me. Um, it sounds uh, not quite as fast as I would like it to go. So what we can do is we can actually just shift the frequency of this LFO to be faster. And I found a, about a 30 second note is a really good uh, speed for this particular effect. So let's hear it. Nice. I think that sounds uh, really good to me, but I don't know that I want it playing all the time. I think it's a little bit distracting if that's always happening on our lead. It's an effect that's sort of like a bend on a guitar. It's something that can be uh, good to accentuate a note, but it's not something that I necessarily want happening constantly. Um, so I am going to see if there's a way that I can only have this LFO active um, part of the time. Or maybe I can change how strong it is using something on my keyboard. And conveniently, I can. Um, because not only can we use these different envelopes to affect things, we can also use aspects of our keyboard to affect things in Helm. And what I want to do is I want to make it so that my modulation wheel on my keyboard is going to affect how much or the strength, basically, of this LFO. When it is at zero, you can see that it's not affecting our tune at all because the, the waveform is completely flattened to a line. It's just going back and forth on the zero. If I raise it up, it's going to have a little bit of effect on our tune, which you can hear here, which is almost too subtle even to hear. And if I raise the strength up all the way, it's what we heard earlier. So I think I want to modulate the strength of my LFO using my mod wheel. So my target is going to be the strength, and my modulator is the mod wheel. So let's set that up. Just like before, I'm going to click on the mod wheel, and now I can see all of the possible parameters that I can modulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the strength, and I'm going to turn it up Let's say most of the way. I'll click on this to save it. And now you can see the strength is at zero. Not really much of an effect. But if I use my mod wheel, I can change the amount that this is modulating the tune as I'm playing using my mod wheel. And this is a really great effect to use in conjunction with the pitch bend. And the great thing is, I can actually have this LFO modulating a few things at once. In fact, I can have it modulating a whole bunch of parameters at once. And same with this mod wheel. So remember how I said I had an idea for this delay earlier? Well, I'm thinking that just like my um, vibrato effect, I like having the delay sometimes as an accentuating effect. But I tend to think it just muddies up the synth if I have it all the time. So what I want to do is I want to have the amount of the delay going up whenever I'm also moving up the vibrato. So I know that my mix is what I'm targeting. It's the parameter that I want to modulate. And I know that the mod wheel is what I want to use to modulate it. So I'm going to click on the mod wheel. I'll click on my mix of my delay. I'll turn it up to, let's say, 35%. Let's see what that sounds like. And now you can see if the mod wheel is at zero, no delay. And if I set my mod wheel up,
you get sort of a selective delay. Which I think is a really neat effect. Um, and maybe I could even do a little bit of... Maybe I'll do a little bit of that on the reverb. See how that sounds. I think that sounds pretty good to me. Um, I'm pretty happy to leave our synth here for now. And I think I'd like to just wrap up by talking a little bit about what we learned about today. Uh, the biggest thing is that we learned about how to modulate things in Helm. And this is something that we're going to keep coming back to and back to and back to. So it's good to really get a grip on what we're doing here. All we're doing is we're figuring out what is it that we want to change over time. The first thing we wanted to change was the tune knob. We also wanted to change the strength of this LFO and the amount of the mix on these two things. And then we have to figure out what it is that we want to be changing it. In this case, we wanted a rhythmic change at a pretty fast frequency. So the best choice we could make was to use this LFO. We clicked on the little helmet, we clicked on the parameter that we wanted to modulate, and we set the amount. After that, we just saved it by clicking again. And now, if I have uh, the mod wheel up, we've got that effect saved. So this is the basis of all sorts of complicated synthesis uh, that we're gonna get into throughout this series. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. It's a pretty useful thing to get uh, to start to understand, and it's used in all sorts of different synthesizers, not just Helm. It'll really unlock your ability to create unique sounds that do just what you want them to do, and that are really interactive. In our next lesson, we're going to learn how to make another type of synth. We're going to make a pluck, and we'll start to learn about the filter, and how we can modulate that to create some unique sounds. For now, have fun with uh, the sounds that you've made, and I'll see you next time.